The main challenge we face as cocoa producing families is to increase our production. On our farms, some trees produce a little while others produce a lot. Some never get sick and others lose every pot they produce to diseases. Grafts, air layering and wooded cuttings are ways to reproduce our best cocoa trees and increase the farm's production. In grafting, parts of two plants are joined to produce a new plant. One plant supplies the roots and the other the crown. With our layering, a new cocoa plant is produced by stimulating a branch to form roots while it is still attached to the tree. For rooted cuttings, a new plant is produced by cutting and stimulating a branch, a young shion, to put out both roots and crown. Today, we are going to learn how to do grafts, air layering, and rooted cuttings. Let's look at some of the advantages of using these techniques. We will visit the farms of Katia, Irene, and Marina, who have experience in using grafts, air layering, and rooted cuttings, and are willing to share their experiences with us. Para ver una buena producción. Estas plantas de cacao son, tienen, pues, según el estudio, son resistentes a más enfermedades. Su producción es más rápida y tiene una ventaja para los productores que es el manejo. El manejo acá yo veo que es este es más un poco más viable. Digamos no se llena mucho de, de enfermedades. Que si hay pues uno puede venir cortarlo con, con tranquilidad. Es un cacao eh, bajo manejable. Bastante producción, y menos monilia, cosecha más. Y eso es algo que también es importante, produce muy temprano. Claro que sí, eh, se ve el cambio de la finca, en la producción que está produciendo casi todo el año. Para mí ha sido muy buena porque es la primera experiencia, ha sido muy buena y hemos tenido ya un, una corta de 40 kilos de cacao. Bueno, al principio, como era algo nuevo, para uno como productor, sí fue un poquito más difícil, pero ya, con, ya ahí viéndola, poniéndolo en práctica, llevando el manejo, sí, ya se le vuelve una rutina y es fácil. Sí, sí le recomiendo a otros productores y productoras. To learn how to reproduce cocoa through grafts, air layering, or rooted cuttings, we must first study the parts of the cocoa plant. Chupons are shoots that grow upward from the trunk of the tree between the base of the trunk and its main fork, the orquette. Buds are plant growth organs that can develop into branches, leaves, flowers and new plants. Buds are found at the base of the leaves and the tips of the branches. When the seed germinates, the cotyledons open as leaves and provide the food the small plant needs to survive until it has its own leaves and produces its own food. Cotyledons are the parts of the plant that correspond to the cocoa bean. Shions are pieces of a branch. The shions should have the same thickness and color as the rootstock where we are going to make the graft. Bark is the tough skin covering that protects the branches and trunk. Between the bark and the wood of the branch, there is a moist, sticky layer called cambium. The cambium is responsible for successfully joining the bud to the rootstock. For grafting, we need simple tools that are easy to obtain. We need pruning shears, knife, and sharpening stone. Also, we need transparent plastic strips measuring about 2 cm wide and 20 cm long, which we can make from thin, cheap plastic bags, moist newsprint paper or banana leaves, color tape labels, and a permanent marker to identify our grafts. Now, Let's take a detailed look at how to do grafts, or layering and rooted cuttings. Bud grafts join a bud, which will provide the crown of the new tree, with the rootstock, which will provide the roots. These grafts can be made on rootstock of any size, but it is necessary that the bud and the rootstock have the same thickness and color of bark. To graft a bud, 
we first take the rootstock and make three cuts just below the scars of the cotyledons, so that when you lift the bark, a tongue is formed. Then, we cut a bud from the shion. The bud we cut should be the same size as the cut we made on the rootstock. We place the bud as if it were a patch on the cut, cover it with the tongue and secure it with a plastic strip, wrapping it around several times, binding it snugly from above to below so that it is securely attached and so that no water can get in. Finally, we make a knot so the plastic does not come loose. Fifteen days after making the graft, we remove the plastic to see whether the bud is green and well attached to the rootstock, which indicates that the graft is successful. If we find that the graft has taken hold, then we immediately tip the rootstock, leaving about four leaves so that they can continue working to provide food to the rootstock and graft. We eliminate all of the shoots and suckers that grow on the rootstock so that they do not weaken the graft or cause a confusion with the bud graft we made. Once the graft has grown to form a branch with four or more leaves, we eliminate the stem from the rootstock, cutting it 10 centimeters above the graft. A shion to be grafted should have the same wife and bark color as the rootstock. There are two ways to graft shions. On the side of the rootstocks, known as the side graft, or on top of the rootstock, known as cleft graft or top graft. Shions grafts can be made in the nursery or in chupons in the field. So this way, we can replace unproductive trees using their chupons or suckers as rootstock. To graft a chupon, we first eliminate all of the other chupons and leave only the one closest to the ground. Chupons one centimeter thick are tipped and a four centimeters deep downward cut is made, splitting the stem into two halves. We take a shion with the same thickness as the chupon and on the thicker end, we make two slanted cuts four centimeters long each, forming a wedge shape. We carefully place the wedge in the cut on the stem and tie it with a plastic strip to keep it in place. Then, we cover it with an elongated plastic bag to protect it from moisture. When the crafted shion has branches and each branch has at least four leaves, we gradually eliminate the crown of the old or unproductive tree to give the graft more light and stimulate its growth that we are replacing to allow the grafts to receive more light, grow well, and form the crown of a new tree. Grafting is easy. Let's ask some experienced grafters. Al principio fue un poco complicado eh, realizar los injertos porque no se tiene la técnica suficiente y la práctica. Cuando inicié vi que era muy difícil y no me animaba, pero los compañeros me, me motivaron a hacerlo. En un mes, los primeros días, lógicamente, La persona, por falta de práctica, eh, pues comete errores y inclusive a veces hace malos cortes. Yo la primera vez, pues no tuve una pega muy buena, pero en la segunda ya mejoré bastante. Al principio práctica eh, da miedo a veces, eh, pero no es nada imposible, simplemente ponerse la meta de que uno puede lograr las cosas. Yo cuando inicié eh, lo vi muy complicado, pero los compañeros me, me motivaron y me animé a hacerlo. Con el paso del tiempo y la práctica vas mejorando el, el, el pegue. Yo empecé, qué sé yo, hice 50 injertos y de esos me pegaron 15 o 10. Bueno, digo yo, malísimo, porque los compañeros míos pegaban mucho. Y seguí, seguí practicando y, y llegué a pegar, qué sé yo, de 100 injertos pegaba 70, 80, entonces ya es, es algo que usted se siente muy bien porque sabe que su trabajo está realmente funcionando. Yo siempre, desde que aprendí la injertación, no he dejado de, de practicarla con la práctica que se hace el técnico. Eh, les recomiendo a los productores que lo, que lo practiquen, que lo pongan en práctica, ya que reducen el tiempo de producción, mejoran el volumen de producción en sus cultivos, Aparte de que reducen muchos costos en la mano de obra, ya que no van a utilizar escaleras para cosechar, eh, qué sé yo, canas, eh, andar arriba de los árboles, que es muy peligroso. As the experts say, practice and practice are the keys to successful grafting. Now, let's see how to do grafts on unproductive adult trees. 
unproductive cocoa trees can be side grafted, a technique known as malayografts. In this case, the rootstock is the trunk of the tree we want to replace. To make cuts in the bark of an adult tree, we need a knife or a short, very sharp machete. The malayograft should be made on a clean, healthy trunk, free of nuts, up to 80 centimeters above ground level. To do a malayograft, first we must choose a shion 1 cm thick and 7 cm long, mature, brown in color, with 2 or 3 buds. We cut the leaves off the shion and make slanted cuts on its thickest end. One cut 3 cm long and the other 5 cm. We make a horizontal cut in the bark of the trunk, down to the wood. Then, about 10 cm above, we make another cut in the bark slanted inward and downward until we reach the horizontal cut forming a window. Then, we make a third vertical cut about 6 cm long, downward for the center of the horizontal cut. We pull the bark out, insert the shion, and tie it with a cord or wrapping it around the trunk as tightly as possible. We cover the graft with a large plastic bag and tie it above and below the graft. We fold the upper end of the bag over so that the water cannot enter. After a month, we check to see whether the buds of the shion have begun to sprout. Then we take off the plastic bag, leaving the shion tied to the rootstock for 60 more days or until the graft has branches and leaves and is well attached to the trunk. When about eight months have passed or when the graft begins to produce fruits, we gradually cut the crown of the tree to stimulate the development and production of the graft. Let's look now at how to do rooted cuttings and air layering of cocoa. To root cocoa cuttings, we do half of the work in the field and half in the nursery. In the field, we select and cut the cuttings, thin shions, and root them in the nursery. Then, we care for them and help them grow until they are ready to be transplanted to the field. It is very important to choose young cuttings, half a centimeter thick and 20 centimeters long, that are near the end of the branch and are mixed brown and green in color. We cut the cuttings half a centimeter above their base. Early in the morning, to avoid heat and desiccation, the shions are wrapped in moist newspaper or banana leaves and taken to the nursery. In the nursery, we cut off two-thirds of each leaf and make a slanted cut in the thickest end of the cutting. We apply a hormone, a root stimulant, and put them in a nursery bag. Then, we put the bags in a row and cover them with yellow, blue, or transparent plastic, forming an airtight chamber. The rooting chamber should remain sealed for about 45 to 60 days, without watering it or uncovering it. Since the cuttings must be kept humid, we must wet well the substrate in the plastic bags before putting the cuttings into root. Once 45 to 60 days have passed, we gradually remove the plastic. The first day, we uncover it for one hour and increase the time exposed by one hour each day until it is uncovered for eight hours. From then on, the cuttings are left exposed all the time until they are ready to be transplanted in the field. The last technique that we will look at today is our layering. In air layering, we stimulate a branch to root while still attached to the tree. First, we choose a healthy branch, one centimeter thick, with all its leaves. We make two circular cuts on the branch, forming a ring within which we eliminate the bark, leaving the wood exposed. We apply rooting hormone to the ring of the branch, covered with moist substrate or moss and cover it with black plastic tie to the branch on either end. Adjust the plastic well so there is contact between the ringed area and the substrate. The air layers should remain covered about 30 to 40 days until they put out roots. Once they have roots, cut the branch 15 centimeters below the roots and plant them in the nursery bags filled with substrate. We take care of them until they put out leaves and the leaves mature. Then, the plant is ready to be transplanted in the field. Grafting, air layering and rooted cuttings are very useful techniques to reproduce our best cocoa trees. All you have to do is practice, practice and more practice. 
you will clearly see your cocoa production go up to. Try and see. See you soon.